Come and listen to my story about a man named Jed. A poor mountaineer barely kept his family fed. And then one day he was shooting at some food. And up through the ground come a bubbling crude. Oil, that is. Black gold. Texas tea. Well, the first thing you know, old Jed's a millionaire. The kinfolk said, Jed, move away from there. Said, California is the place you ought to be. So they loaded up the truck and they moved to Beverly Hills, that is, swimming pools, movie stars. The Beverly Hillbillies. Come along and visit with the Clampett family As they take you to their mansion in the hills of Beverly And when they do, you'll run into a friend of theirs you've met That good old friend with filter blend Winston Cigarette Winston tastes good like a cigarette should That boy gets to go and he's a one-man stampede. I hope nobody gets in his way. Ellie May! Ellie May! <laughs> Granny, did Jethro come through here? clean into the cement pot. Something wrong with Granny? Well, I hate to tell you this, Jed, but she's stiff as a board. At this time in the morning? Well, I never knew Granny to take more than a thimble full and all. <laughs> My doggy, she is stiff, isn't she? Granny, I'm ashamed of you. Uh, this here's the letter Jethro dropped when he fell in the cement pond. He says he'll be right in. Oh, no, he won't. Jethro, you stay out in the sun till you're dry. <laughs> What's wrong with Granny? No. Go outside and chase Jethro till he gets dry. I catch him, can I wrestle him? No, Ellie, well, just run him. <laughs> what happened? What hit me? Going liquor, I reckon. Well, whoever throwed it at me left it in the jug. <laughs> Granny, can you walk? Of course I can walk. <laughs> Well, then, uh, let's walk over to the table here and sit down while uh, Pearl reads us his letter. Quit pulling the table away from me. <laughs> Granny, you and Miss Drysdale been hitting the juice a little? Of course not. I never take more than a thimble full, and you know it. Granny, Jed, I, I can't read all the writing because the ink is run. But this letter's from Lester Flat and Earl Scruggs, and there's a flying out here. Where? Doggy. You hear that, Granny? Old Lester and Earl's coming out here to see us. You mean they're coming to see Pearl? Them two always was crazy in love with her. Oh, Granny, that was a long time ago before they moved to Nashville and become famous. A man never forgets his first love, Pearl. And you was the first love of both Flat and Scruggs. Oh, stop it. I was just a girl, and, and they was just boys. But big boys to grant you. <laughs> I never seen two big boys crazier in love with one little woman. They was all scrapping over you. Or singing to you. Sometimes they do both. Sing a chorus and then scrap a chorus. <laughs> you had their heart melting like hog grease on a hot griddle. <laughs> now, now, stop it. You got me a blushing. I, I don't want to hear no more about it. All right, Pearl. Remember the way they used to serenade me? Yeah. Lester with his guitar and Earl with his banjo. Both of them singing love songs till their throats was raw. Earl, how come you never said yes to one of them fine boy? I just couldn't decide betwixt them. They, they both asked me to elope, but 
I couldn't decide whether to fly with Flat or skip with Scruggs. <laughs> you better decide now. I'll bet that's why they're flying out here, to get your answer. After all these years? Oh, Granny, don't be ridiculous. Man never forgets his first love, Pearl. He won't hold you on his lap and let you are an old five-string banjo. <laughs> pearl, 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 he's nutty as a squirrel. If you'll be Mrs. Scrubs, we will live on kisses and hugs. Happy hey, as to... Pearl, I think we better stop this song, because you only comes a wife. Yeah, they're jealous of Pearl as it is. Well, they got a reason to be, because I ain't never seen a girl as pretty as Pearl. Yeah, we had to settle for second best. Why'd you stop singing, Earl? <laughs> yes, what was that song you boys were doing just now? Oh, uh, just an old tune we used to sing. Before we met you. Oh, are you going to use it in your Los Angeles engagement? Oh, no, I don't think we'd better. Uh, say, Earl, it sure will be nice to see old Jed Clampett again, won't it? It sure will, Lester. You know who they can't wait to see again, don't you? Of course. Fabulous pearl. <laughs> we'll finally get a look at this raving beauty. Oh, I'm dying to meet her, aren't you? <laughs> you make out any more of the letter, Pearl? There's another word coming through. E N G A G. Engagement. Granny was right. He's coming for your answer. You gotta get engaged to one of them. Oh, I don't believe it. After all these years. Pearl, you wanna take my advice? You marry that little Earl Scruggs. Don't you do it, Pearl. Take Lester Flat. I ain't figuring on marrying nobody. Now let's not have no more of this kind of talk. Well, Ma, I'm winded, but I'm dry. <laughs> Jethro Scruggs. What? I'm Bodine. Oh, go change your clothes. Next, you'll be teaching them dogs how to climb trees. Look up yonder. <laughs> Ellie, quick as you can, come on in the house and give Granny a hand. She's cooking for the big wingding tonight. We's having a wingding? We sure are. Earl Scruggs and Lester Flatt's coming to town. I hear to them. They make records and everything. Them two learn how to sing and play, serenade, and your Aunt Pearl. Really? Well, tell me about it, Pa. Well, uh, Aunt Pearl was just about your age then. And she favored you a lot, too. Real pretty. Had corn silky hair just like yours. And a beautiful figure. Well, sir, she pretty near drove Lester and Earl out of their banjo picking mines. <laughs> so many of them boys, they finally left the hills and moved to Nashville. Well, how come Aunt Pearl didn't marry up with one of them? Couldn't make up her mind, I reckon. But she's gonna have to tonight. Them boys are coming out here insisting on an engagement. That's how come we's having a wingding, huh? Yeah. Back home, we'd had a barn dance. Trouble is, these Beverly Hills places ain't got no barn. <laughs> well, couldn't we borrow somebody's barn, Pa? Well, scarce as they are, and us being strangers be too much to ask. <laughs> we'll make do, though. I sent Jethro out with a truck to find some hay and some corn shucks and one thing and another and put them in the drawing room. Reckon he can make it look like a barn? I told him to do the best he could. 
Hey, Ma, I got a surprise. Come see how I fixed the drawing room up for the wing ding tonight. Wait well, a minute, dear. I've got to decide which dress I'm going to wear tonight. Do, do you think this one shows off my figure? Well, yeah, Ma. But wear it anyway. It's pretty. <laughs> Come on, Ma. Uncle Jet told me to fix the drawing room up like a bar. I'll see how you like it. <laughs> you ain't seen nothing yet, Ma. Come on in. <laughs> You didn't bring in a, a mule. <laughs> that rascal get out again. Yes, bro. You're making me old before my time. How could you bring this livestock into a mansion like this? It wasn't easy, Ma, but I figured it out. I <laughs> took the truck up to the front of the mansion and... You get this livestock out of here and you'll be quick about it. But why? Because I say why. Now get it out, take it back where you got it, and I mean right now. Well, I'll do my best, Ma, but first I gotta round up that mule and them other pigs. I should have married Lester Earl. Maybe this wouldn't have happened to me. This is a special operator. The number you have dialed does not exist. You sound like the same lady I was talking to before. Yes. I'm afraid I am. Well, then you put me through to the same butcher shop I was talking to before. I told that fella to send me a side of pork and some pig feet for tonight's windig. And it better get here, too, before I... Never <laughs> mind, honey, it's here. And I've got to say for him, it's fresh. <laughs> there you are, you little rascal. You're going home. Where are you going? I've got... I told me to take him back where he come from. You <laughs> pearl, 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 you look just like a girl. That's the truth, you do. Uh, oh. <laughs> Lester and Earl just called from the hotel. They're here already? Yeah, I told them to come over about six o'clock for the wing dig. Oh, my goodness. And I, well, I, I, I haven't even picked out a, a, a dress for tonight. Oh, Jed, how do you like this one? Yeah, I like them all already. Looked at six. <laughs> I just can't decide. Have you decided which one you're going to say yes to? Nope. I thought I'd wait and see how the years had treated them. Yeah, I reckon you're smart to look them over first. Some folks age is quicker than others. That's right. And don't forget, them boys is partner 18 or 19 years older than when I seen them last. Well, I'm partner 10 years older myself. <laughs> Jeff, don't you go away. I want you to see the rest of my dresses. Ah, oh, Pearl, I ain't no judge of women's clothes. I need a man's opinion. Listen, Jeff. Mrs. Lester Flat. Mrs. Earl Scruggs. Pearl Flat. Pearl Scruggs. <laughs> <laughs> they all sound good, don't they? <laughs> Wait, course, driver. Louise, I think we're making a mistake. Lester and Earl will be furious when they find out about this. Let them be furious. I want to get a look at Pearl before that party tonight. I want to know how I'm going to stack up. <laughs> but we've just spent three hours at the beauty parlor. You look gorgeous. So do you. But maybe Pearl looks super gorgeous. <laughs> Louise, be sensible. Our husbands knew this woman years and years ago. Do you realize how old she must be by now? I hear they start very young back in those hills. <laughs> now, we've come this far, and I'm not leaving until I've seen Pearl. But this is going to be very embarrassing. She's going to think we're a couple of snoopy, worried wives. Aren't we? <laughs> yes, but... <laughs> Look, Gladys, if it'll make you feel any better, we won't tell her who we are. We'll say we're uh, a couple of those house-to-house uh, -house cosmetic saleswomen. But you'll find out who we are at the party. They will all have a good laugh over it. Now, come on. Oh, hi there, ladies. Come in, come in. Thank you. What can I do for you? We're uh, selling cosmetics. You're selling what? Cosmetics, you know, beauty cream, face powder, perfume. Oh, thank you, ladies, but I never use it. <laughs> we sell it to the lady of the house, and we understand a lady named Pearl lives here? Yeah, yeah, she sure does. Yeah? Yeah. 
I need your help out in the... Oh, I didn't know you had company. Are you Pearl? Please be Pearl. <laughs> well, I ain't. Who are you? These lady sells beauty cream, Granny. Oh, you can see I don't need none. <laughs> oh, Jed, I need you. Well, Pearl will be down directly. She comes down them stairs every five minutes wearing a different beautiful gown. She's trying to pick one for the wing ding tonight. Make yourself to home. Y'all think this dress is fancy enough for a wingding? Well, back to the beauty shop. didn't, and it's coming up for seven. Well, they better get here quick before Jethro has all the vittles at. <laughs> Lester and Early, Charlie's wonderful. <laughs> Brother. Didn't come yet, Pearl. Well, why'd you call me, Granny? For you to stop that overgrown young'un of yourn from eating us out of a wing ding. <laughs> He's done gone through my crawdad dip and my pawpaw spread. <laughs> And right now, he's in there tossing down them pickled pig's feet like there was popcorn. <laughs> Jethro, you come on out here. Now, you better stop him before he gets into the ham hocks on the turnip greens. Too late. <laughs> them ham hocks sure was good. Was. <laughs> Jethro, did you eat all them ham hocks alone? No, ma'am. I done like you always told me. I ate the greens, too. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I thought Skippy and the Anya little trick to do it the wing ding. Any me, what happened to that pretty dress you was wearing? Oh, Pa, I can't square dance in that thing. And it ain't good for working with my critters, neither. Lester and Earl don't get here soon. Our wing ding is gonna fall apart. I tell you, Earl, I just don't understand it. Their wives spent all afternoon in the beauty shop and then went back again tonight. That's what we get from wearing city women. Yeah, I reckon we'll just have to leave the party tonight at 9 o'clock and go pick them up. I reckon so. Hey, I've got an idea. Let's surprise old Jed with that song we wrote about. You're on. Come on, Skippy. Come on. Jump. Come on. Jump. That's the way. That's the boy. Come on. Come on. Come on. Jump, Albert. Jump. Good doggy. Come on. That's the dog. Yeah. He's them. They's here. That's Lester and Earl, all right. Not yet, Jed. Let me get upstairs first. Well, what for, Pearl? So I can make an entrance. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a listen to my story about a man named Jed. Poor mountaineer barely kept his family fed. Had some food up through the ground, come a bubbling crew. Oh, that is Texas tea. <laughs> well, <laughs> what's up, Earl? Come in, come in. You know Granny and Jethro Howdy. and his daughter Ellie Mae. Howdy. 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 Uh, where'd that song come from? Y'all was singing out there. Oh, we wrote it, Jed. We heard about your good luck clean down in Nashville. Where are the doggies? Where's Pearl? Upstairs waiting. Come on down, Pearl. Come on down here. Come on, here's Earl Lester. Come on, we're waiting for you. Pearl, 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 come let us see our girl. Are you still our valentine? Do you still look so refined? Come and let us see our darling Pearl. Lester, what? Hi, Pearl. Oh, God, it's so good it's to so see good. you both. See you, Pearl. Listen, everybody, I hope you'll excuse us for coming without wow. You're excused. <laughs> we have a good reason. Of course you do, and we understand, Earl. Let's all relax now and have some good old stomping music and some of Granny's vittles and get acquainted all over again. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>
Well, come on, let's go in there. I jump. remember how you boys liked a nice rope rope. And will you see the beauty I warmed up for you? <laughs> Well, uh, just a minute now. I want to talk to you. And I cooked up a great big mess of grits, some possum shanks, some sweet potatoes, some grits, and some pole. <laughs> <laughs> Look what your dog has done. Oh, I'm awful sorry, Granny. I'll get them right out. Get them off. Come on, Jethro. Come on. <laughs> your eyes be clear if I ever did see anything like that in my whole life. Come here. Oh, get out of here. <laughs> sorry, Diane. Oh, get them all down here. Out of here. Oh, now, calm down, Granny. Calm down. We wasn't hungry no way. I tell you what you do. You come over here and set yourself down in this chair, and Earl and me will play you some soothing music. Jed, I just can't decide. I like them both. Well, you better get to liking one better than the other one. There's just too many pretty women out here in Beverly Hills. Now, you take them two come to the door this afternoon selling beauty cream? If Earl and Lester ever get to look at them, you ain't gonna keep them on the string for long. <laughs> now, anytime you wanna know where I'm going down the road, get my girl on the line, you find me there most any time. Now, old man Flatty on the farm, from the hog lot to the barn, from the barn to the rail, he made his living by carrying the mail. Jeff, yeah, I just made my decision. Which one, Kurt? Can't marry neither one of them. Why not? Because I'll be busting up one of the most wonderful musical teams in this whole country. How come you to see that? Because the one that don't get me will be eat up with jealousy and they'll get to fighting like they used to. <laughs> Pearl, I believe you're right. <laughs> Just let me get up the nerve to tell them because this is going to hurt. <laughs> I get the blues, I walk the soul right off my shoe. Don't know why I love her so. Gal of mine lives down the road. Cheer me up. I'm going out to the kitchen and roust you up some fiddles. Even if I have to open my last jar of deviled hawk eggs. <laughs> Earl, I've got a good idea for our Los Angeles engagement. What's that? Let's ask Pearl and all the rest of them to square dance on the stage. That's a great idea. Pearl, we got something to ask. You know we come all the way out here for an engagement. Lester, before you go any further, the answer is no. What? No to both of you. But Pearl. Now, don't beg your boys. This hurts Pearl more than it does you. <laughs> time heals all wounds. Speaking of time, Earl, we're late. Come on. We'll be back just as soon as we can make it. Pearl? They couldn't take it. They run off just like they'd done 18 years ago. <laughs> Guitar and her banjo. Don't you think we ought to wait up for him to come back for him? It might take another 18 years. Let's get to bed. Hey, come back, Ryan. If you could have seen him run out of here when I said no. <laughs> Folks, we'd like you to meet our wives, Mrs. Flat, Mrs. Scrooge, Gladys, and Louise. Howdy. 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 You see, Pearl, I told you if they ever met them two women, you wouldn't keep them on the string. They married them on the rebound. Oh, Lester and Earl. I had to settle for second best. <laughs> Sorry, my critters ate up all the vittles for the wing ding last night, and they sorry too. Well, uh, but we got a surprise to make it up to you. Surprise? Bring it in, fellas. <laughs> <laughs> this year's a Winston train, Paul. <laughs> we figured if anything'd cheer you up, it'd be a whole heap of Winston cigarettes. 
Well, you sure figured it right, Ellie Mae. Where'd you get all these winces? Well, there's a machine down at the filling station. It's got all kinds of filtered cigarettes in it, but that fella said that more folks buy Winston than any other kind. I reckon there's a reason for that. You see, folks has a way of latching on to the best. And Winston is the best I ever tasted. Yes, sir, Winston tastes good like a cigarette should. <laughs> The Beverly Hillbillies has been presented by Winston. We hope you've enjoyed it, and we hope you will try Winston, because Winston tastes good, like a cigarette should. Well, now it's time to say goodbye to Jed and all his kin. They would like to thank you folks for kindly dropping in. You're all invited back next week to this locality to have a heaping helping of their hospitality. Hillbilly, that is. Set a spell. Take your shoes off. You all come back now, here. This has been a Filmways presentation.